Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to The Breakfast Show here on Sky News Tuesday morning. Pleased to say that the Employment Minister, Alison McGovern, is here for the government this morning. Good to see you. Good morning. You were just telling me about what it's like being in government. Oh, it's incredible. It's frustrating and stressful, but in exactly the way I'd always hoped it would be. You know, being able to tackle some of the problems that I've wanted to for a very long time. So it's... It's good stress, if that makes sense. Yeah, and you've waited a long time for it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about young people um, and whether they should lose their benefits if they refuse to take up work and training opportunities. Well, we know that nearly one in eight of our young people are now out of work, not learning, not doing anything. And that is not acceptable because if you have um, a break in your career right at the very beginning, the consequences of that stay with you throughout your whole working life. So we can't allow that to happen. You mentioned um, people losing their benefits. Of course, it's the rules in the system that if you um, accept Social Security that you have to stick to those rules, and that's not going to change. What is going to change is much better chances and opportunities for young people, particularly because we know that in some parts of the country, you know, the rate of young people being out of work is very high, 25% even, and in some places it's really quite low. And so we've got to focus on that difference and really make sure the support that's available to people locally is really tailored to what they're experiencing. Do you agree with Liz Kendall, the boss, that some people um, out of work have self diagnose mental health problems? Um, I always agree with Liz. I think... Very what, wise. What I know, don't mess with her. <laughs> what she was pointing out there is that, you know, we know that we've got some people who have very serious mental health conditions. Um, you know, there's a question whether a diagnosis is always helpful. But broadly, for the state of the nation, you know, the health and the mental ill health that we're experiencing, all of us need better mental well-being, I would argue. I think there are those very serious conditions which need tailored health support and also tailored employment support. But for all of us, our life at work can be a big driver of stress, so we all need to be a more mentally healthy nation, if that makes sense. It does, but should it be self-diagnosed? Or should there be a third party that says, yes, that is a mental health challenge that means you can't work? Well, the only thing I would say, and this is my own, purely my own personal opinion, is that for many, for many of us, you know, diagnosis may or may not be helpful. The thing that can help us do better with our mental health is a job that gives us routine, something that makes us feel a part of something, that gives us a sense of autonomy and that we're able to be creative at work. And that's what we want to bring about. The cultural shift we want to see is people having a good life at work, which is much more likely to keep them mentally and physically well over time. Do you consider um, people who sign themselves off work um, to be criminals who game the system? Um, I think, is that a quote from Keir Starmer's piece? Because actually the um, criminal activity in the social security system that really worried me was um, we had, under the last government, under the Tories, we had some dreadful criminal activity, a big case where a group of organised criminals stole from social security. Mm -hmm. To me, that is absolutely unacceptable. Yeah, but that's not my question. I, I, I know, but I think, that's, I think that's what he was referring to. But what do you think? What, what about I, people who sign themselves off work when they're not sick? No one should do that. What I think is that people should... Is that criminal activity? I, there are um, criminal um, sanctions within the social security system, but what I think people should do is stick to the rules. Yeah. And that, is it criminal that activity means... activity if you sign yourself off work and you're not sick? When you... Because you're stealing from the state. Well... Unfortunately, people have stolen from the state and we're bringing forward proposals to deal with that. When it comes to people um, you know, who are unwell, we need a system that helps and support them. But what about when people, they're not? People have to stick to the rules. Do you just not want to answer the question? No, I think you're asking me about specific criminal activity, which I've, which I've commented on. No, no, think... no, you haven't. That's why I keep pressing you on it. My question is, if somebody signs themselves off sick and they're not sick, they're stealing. They shouldn't, they, they shouldn't do that. So is it there criminal be, activity? There, the, the state has powers of investigation and that's what should happen. OK. I wouldn't, you know, don't want to comment on any individual case that hasn't been through that. Case. Case. Hasn't been it through wasn't that an individual case. It wasn't an individual case. It was more of a principle. Um, you say you're going to get Britain working again, but the Confederation of British Industry says tax increases mean that that's not going to happen for some people. Jobs are going to be lost as a direct result of, of the budget. 
So when we came into government, we had a difficult decisions. Si Twenty billion pound plaque hole. I can do it for you if you like. But the question is, you can CBI. do it. You can, do, you can do it for me, and everybody knows that message and knows that that was true. Mm. When it comes to businesses, I've spoken to business organisations about our proposals, and the point of the white paper today is to serve employers better. I know that times will be tough, and I accept that. We have a low unemployment rate, historically speaking, but we don't want it to get worse, and that's why the DWP needs to serve employers much better. Okay, only one in six employers ever really think about using the job centre. That's not good enough because that means we're not serving employers well and it also means for people who need the job centre they're not getting the best chances and opportunities so well, we've got to change that. It's not just the CBI, an independent watchdog saying the UK government's impact assessment of its workers rights reforms is not fit for purpose because it doesn't explore the effect of higher costs for employers on wages, jobs etc. So that analysis is about the assessments that have been made and, you know, obviously will take into account what people say. But when you think about the substance of the policy, those make work pay reforms, what they do is end exploitative zero hours contracts. Not fit for purpose though, independent but watchdog. That, but people have been crying out for some of these poor practices at work that have been going on for far too long. People have been crying out for a government that was prepared to act and legislate. So we will obviously take the people's advice. The two things can be independent. Not doing a, job, a, a good, good enough job is what you're saying. OK, we accept that this is a problem, but what, how you're going to solve it is not good enough according yeah. to this independent watchdog. Well, we will continue to work with people and listen to them as we bring those reforms into force. That's what good governments do and we will listen to what's been said. Um, about the policy assessments that's been, been made. But I do say on the fundamentals, do we think people get a good enough chance in this country or do we have too many people working too hard for their poverty? And I think it's the latter. We okay. have to give people a better chance and opportunity. Where do you stand on assisted dying? So, can I be honest? Yes, of course. I haven't decided how I'm going to vote. I've listened to my constituents who've been so kind and so generous to share with me their experiences. And I want to listen to my colleagues in the debate. And I'm going to listen to that debate in full and decide how to vote. I think it's so important that people are able to have a good death and that families feel that their loved one was able to die in the most peaceful way possible, you know, in accordance with their views. But I haven't decided on this issue myself. Do you think it's being rushed? Um, there's a poll out, 5,000 people, so it's a big poll. Only 11% supported assisted dying when details were explained to them. Uh, but before that, they didn't feel that they knew enough about it. So that would suggest that it's not been debated enough. Well, it will be debated as part of the parliamentary process. And I think that the discussion we're having about it now in the country is good. As I mentioned, I've had quite a few constituents in through my office door to come and share their experience with me. It's not easy no. coming to talk to your MP about a moment in your life, you know, sure. the death of a loved one that is very traumatic often for people. But I think we're having this debate now and that's a good thing. So you don't think it's being rushed through? Well, the parliamentary process, you know, has lots of opportunities for discussion. Um, I don't think this is different from other things, but I, well, it I is, take it's a private member's. But I take, I take, I take the point that you know, people, when they're thinking about it, often have lots of questions. What is pain management like? What, what does happen at the end of life? Not everybody knows about those things. So I think we should take the opportunity to all learn, as I am trying to do. Okay. Final thought. Um, two million people have signed a petition calling for a general election. Two million. Andrew Griffith, the Shadow Business Secretary, says if this Labour government were a consumer product after Rachel Reeves' budget, people could return it under the consumer mis-selling rules. All of this is happening and the boss is on daytime telly talking about his kittens. <laughs> well, I didn't see the bit about the kittens. Yeah, it's called Prince if you're interested. Oh, uh, right, OK. Um, so we've had lots of elections over the past few years. People took their decision in July. I don't doubt there's loads of people who didn't vote for us, even while 
um, we got an excellent result and we're trying to bring about the reforms that people voted for. But I'm sure, you know, there's plenty of people out there who would sign that. There's a lot of That's unrest it. in the country, though, isn't there? You have to acknowledge that. A lot of what you're doing is not acceptable to many people, including two million who've chosen to sign a petition. So given the performance of politics over recent years, I don't blame anybody for being frustrated and angry with the state of the country and what has happened. I've lived through the ups and downs of politics over the past 14 years, and I don't think that it has performed well for people in the country, so I don't blame anybody for being cross about that. The thing that will change that is improvements that people can really see. That's why I want job centres in every town in this country that people can walk into and get real help, because I think that's how you rebuild faith that government and politics can actually do something good for people. It's good to see you. I have to let you go. I could chat to you all day. It's good Thanks, to talk Kate. to you. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.